weather outside is not that cold And if you take my hand, I'll walk with you to Georgia Hello everyone and welcome back to Country with Celine. On today's show, I am joined by lovely country singer here in BC, Annika Katharina. What if I was the one you're loving? What if I ever to see your eyes? Come on baby, you know where something. Damn, I don't want to say goodbye. Tell me what's it gonna take to realize. Baby, what if I... Annika, how are you doing today? Good. How are you, Celine? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Since we're both in BC right now, I can say that it's been a really nice day, hasn't it? It's been beautiful. Quite lucky to have this weather here. <laughs> oh, yes. Coming from a couple days ago when we had that bizarre snowstorm um, that was so random. I mean, I moved here to get away from that weather in Ontario, and I swear the weather's been crappier here than in Ontario. <laughs> but... Hey, I mean, I guess the West Coast is just very unpredictable. It's very unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> but just, you know, looking at the weather, I can see that in two weeks, it's supposed to be like 18 degrees. So I didn't know that. That's Thank exciting. you. <laughs> that just made me very happy right now. I had no idea it was going to be 18. Oh, okay, so Stanley Park bike rides, then it is. Okay, hikes in Grouse Mountain and Cypress. Yes. Countess so many good spots here. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, for everybody that's actually listening right now and hearing us talk about BC, um, if you don't know what BC is, because it's, it's funny, you'd be surprised how many people don't really know that much about Canada, but it's on the West Coast. Uh, it's called British Columbia. And we are, I am in Vancouver and she is in Abbotsford, which is only like 40 minutes away from each other. So it's not too bad, but it's gorgeous here. So if you ever have the opportunity to head out West, come out west in Canada. There's mountains, there's beaches, there's hikes, there, there's just lakes, cottage, it's cottage country. Well, you guys call it cabins, but yeah. um, <laughs> it's, there's so much to do here. And so everybody, you guys got to definitely come on out. It's, it's We even have a desert here in BC. I'm sorry, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? The Okanagan area is, you know, considered a desert and wonderful wineries. And it's not too far from Vancouver, it's maybe like four hours max to find a lovely hot oh it's just there's just so much at the, the reach of your fingertips <laughs> yeah there's a lot but a desert you caught me off guard with that one. Oh, oh what do you mean a desert though is it act it's not like an actual desert they just call I it I think it's categorizes I mean I should know this I took geography <laughs> but I mean they got rattlesnakes there what in the it, world I believe it's like considered a desert Okay, remind me to never go there. Thank you. <laughs> I, <laughs> I haven't seen one yet. I visit quite often, but haven't seen one yet. But I've heard locals talk about, you know, they hear the rattling and there's always signs if you're golfing, like don't go off into the the bushy part, the brambly bushy parts, like, you know, okay. with caution. <laughs> I mean, we're already, we got to be cautious of bears here. And now you're telling me rattlesnakes. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That is not what I signed up for when I moved here, but um, okay. For the I'll, adventure. I'll Pardon? For the adventure. <laughs> I mean, it, it's pretty, it, it's pretty out there though. So I would definitely venture out there in the summer because like you said, wineries, it's like California out there. So yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, enough of BC. Let's chat about you. So you just released a song, What If I? Okay, so take me through this one. What made this song stand out that you wanted to release it? Uh, I, uh, so for me, if I hear something just kind of like on a acoustic and just stripped down, if there's, I get this feeling, I don't know. I'm like, I, I remember hearing it because my producers, Dan and Garrett, uh, brought in this song that they, they were writing with Brett and Rose and we were going to, I was coming into the studio and I had this idea of what I wanted to write about and we were planning this and that was kind of like where we were at i had a concept i told them about it like a week ago and then they came and they're like wait 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 before we start can we show you something that we worked on and i was like okay yeah uh, sure of course and then i heard it i'm like that's sick right away just the the what if i chorus was ringing in my head and i was like wow like <sighs> <laughs> we're we're working on this like that's all I that's that right away I was like yeah this what if I chorus this ain't going anywhere 
So then we're like, okay, okay, we're going to work on it some more. We grabbed in another writer, Parker Gray, and we kind of put in elements from my past and a story that I've always kind of wanted to tell that whole friend zone type situation. And I feel like so many people go through oh, it, yeah. even if it's in high school or you're going through it mm -hmm. now, or even just anything in life where you just feel like if I don't you know if I don't try this or if I don't go for it in this way I will always be stuck with that what if feeling mm -hmm. so like what if I went for it and it's kind of like a, a motivating story for yourself yeah. so I just thought you know this concept is awesome this chorus is great I'm putting my personal side into the song this is great it was just it happened all so fast even from demoing to production mm -hmm. that I was like oh I want to put it out right now and I, I recorded this in September and then they're like yeah great put it out but then I'm like wait <laughs> there is a strategy to putting out music so I thought okay I really wanted to put it out because I was super excited but then you know I talked to a few other people they're like well maybe you should wait like you know what are you gonna do after that song comes out or how are you gonna promote it and you can't just like put it out yeah, there's and, a lot that goes on behind the scenes that nobody really knows about. Yeah, and I think for my first release, I kind of put it out there. I didn't, you know, I'm new to the song releasing process. So I kind of took from my two releases before that, okay, yeah, it is It is a good idea to wait. And I'm so glad that I did because there's been a good response. And I don't know if all that could happen if I just kind of, bam, here you go, yeah. end of summer when it's like, wait, this is more of a, a fresh, you know, yes. optimistic song. Why not start 2024 with this song? So mm -hmm. it's kind of worked out, you know, better that way anyways. Because at the end of summer, you're like, all right, time to nuzzle in with the <laughs> slow, sad ballads. Yeah, so you true. know, that's what I'm doing myself. Because if you're here for BC in the fall, if we don't get lucky, it's going to be very wet and dark yeah and it's so true <laughs> nothing you want to do is curl up <laughs> and listen yeah. to some sad ballads so all, all the it time was, it was kind of good time and the making the song was so much fun and to me I love a song where you can just kind of like belt out the words you're saying mm -hmm. so you're almost you're singing it in a way where you're like this is how you want the message to be received like high energy positivity and to me there's a lot of belty type notes in the song which I love that stuff you know I have a cover band where we're we're covering ACDC and Led Zeppelin and you know I'm doing Janis Joplin so it's like I really got to bring in some of those elements that I do with my band and put it in the song which is such a uh, a good experience and such a good feeling when you're like yeah I can really feel you know Annika coming through which to me, I'm still on that journey of finding who is Annika, Katharina, you know, she's going to put herself out there recently, 2023. Like, you know, I'm still figuring that out and I've loved this journey and the wavelengths that I've been <laughs> taking myself on and the, the guidance that I've got along the way. So it's, mm -hmm. it's been a really good song to put out for 2024 and continue on this journey of, you know, who is Annika Katharina and what is the music she's putting out? What is she trying to say? No, it's a perfect song to start 2024 off. I mean, I can't, if you did release it in September, it still would have been awesome. But the fact that you waited, um, first off, you got lots of patience because I know when artists have good songs right on their fingertips, they want everybody to hear them. So the fact that you sat on this for like three months, yeah. I'm giving you credit for that because that <laughs> takes a lot of work. Um, but it's funny, you just mentioned like a couple different genres there. So what made, because um, if you're covering ACDC, like Led Zeppelin, that's like straight rock. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to get into country music then? It was definitely Patsy Klein. Okay. I So back when I was younger, choosing music is so important. Like when I was doing a lot of singing competitions when I was young. So me and my mom would think pretty hard about what songs were I going to sing. And to me, she would play me songs that I would never have found on my own, like Etta James, um, yeah. Patsy Klein, like these, uh, Aretha Franklin. I, you know, I was just, you know, we'd listen to pop, whatever was on the pop, the beat, the radio. 
And I remember thinking like, yeah, song choice is so important. So my mom would introduce me to so many different artists and I didn't really care what genre they came from. If it was a beautiful sounding song, yeah, I want to sing it. So that's this, all these genres are like, I will sing anything that makes kind of like that feeling you get when you listen to music. I want to do that while I'm also singing. Cause I, you know, in the same time, it's a very selfish thing while you're singing. Cause you're giving yourself, you know, an experience as you're doing, as you're performing and country, the Patsy Klein, And then I started listening to the stories and you're like, wow, like country music is so much different mm -hmm. than the rock that I sing. If you listen to some of the lyrics that rock and roll artists are singing there's like a whole nother vibe that's going on so, so i really appreciate rock like for that sense but then country i'm intentionally listening to the stories that they're saying when i listen to other artists and their music which i really like about country music and then i don't know i've always had like a little i wouldn't say twang from bc here but there's almost like a little sound that I would put into maybe some of the rock music I would put this little flair onto it mm -hmm. that made it sound like a little more on the countryside but it's not country so I kind of had that element so everyone's always like oh you're a country you do country covers so you're a country singer I was like yeah but you haven't heard my Tracy Chapman <laughs> or you know there's like so many different uh genres that I sing that I found that the country undertone kind of was like following it in each genre that I was experiencing so when you yeah. sing when you sing country you just have like it just comes out mm -hmm. I don't even it's it just it's so natural um yeah and it's not even like you're faking it because you're not because when you listen to a country song you you sing it the way that yeah. the song should be sung and yeah. I mean it, it's different from like I know artists in the industry who are yeah they're from BC and they have a full-on twang and it's like mm -hmm. what are you doing you there's yeah there's, like, there's no that is like a too much but if it's like a little subtle it, mm -hmm. it's totally fine because it, yeah. it just happens when you sing country music yeah and it's, it, it's not gonna have a, a rock and roll accent when mm -hmm. you sing like something <laughs> about like a Tim McGraw song like it's not yeah. gonna sound like that but no. um also country music too because you like other genres which is so fair i mean there's so many good genres out there but you can even be like hardy hardy has took rock and he has yeah. completely put it into his country songs and it's rock country and there's even like rap country there's so, oh, yeah. so much. much yeah like country is not just country like country no. is so much more nowadays and i that's awesome for artists like yourselves that you can take advantage of that and you can mm -hmm. input certain rock and roll elements like you were saying into your country song and it's yeah. still a country song, but it has like a little more edge to it, which it's nice to hear. It's refreshing because mm -hmm. it is 2024. It's new era, you know? Country's booming and I see a lot of people, I'm like, that's a rock song, mm -hmm. but it's country, but I love it. Like I just, yep. I think cause there's so much, there's so much talent in Nashville. I mean, like uh, some of my favorite rock bands, like they're, they're out of Nashville and they're, they're, everyone's kind of like sharing yep. styles and it's it's getting implemented into songs. And I'm like, that's so cool to me. I'm like, don't we all just want to hear like six songs? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like even Pitbull is with Dolly Parton on a song. Like, I'm sorry, never in a million years would I have even, even Dolly Parton released a rock and roll album too. Yeah, like, which is like, she's got some of my favorite rock and female like um, Dorothy the lead singer of Dorothy like I you know I look up to these female rock singers I'm like she's out there with Dolly Parton and I'm like mm -hmm. this is so great <laughs> it's it's unbelievable even with Beyonce too which there's so much controversy behind that because they're that like song. it's good Texas hold them oh my god when that song comes on I can't stop dancing the other one though the 16 carriages I think that's what it's called I'm like mm -hmm. That one, I don't know how I feel about that one. Have you heard that one but yet? I haven't. I, to be honest, I have. I don't know if I actually listened. Yeah, it's because not... when I heard Texas Hold'em, I was like, I don't know. It's one of those songs where you're just like, all of a sudden my shoulders are up here, <laughs> and all of a sudden like I want to like put my foot out in front of me, and you're like, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. But I just see people like this is a new line dance song that this is gonna be like when people go to a country bar, like this yeah. comes on, they're like cowboy hat on let's go everyone like everyone in the room let's go and I thought the controversy I'm like wait but 
it's a good song. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait to go to the Roxy and they play it. I'm like, I'm just going to be on the dance floor. Right. <laughs> you know? right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The Roxy's a good time too. So it's a good time. <laughs> yeah. be in there. Good time. Everyone has to experience the Roxy once. <laughs> Everybody has to experience. I, I was even, I was looking at your Instagram too, and you even performed at the Roxy last summer. Yeah. How, how was it performing there? It was a fun time. Uh, it's so different because I've always gone there as like a, a person, a spectator, and you're like, oh, it's fun to be up there and, you know, and, you know, have the lights on you and, and I was singing original songs. So it's, it was a cool, it was a cool experience. Yeah, I love that. I they love always that. have fantastic house bands. So when you yeah. go there, you're like, you're also dancing to talented musicians. And I wish there was more roxy's all over yeah. the fraser valley so you know seriously roxy is like nashville because when you go to mm -hmm. nashville you go to broadway yeah. you're not listening to stereo music you're listening to no. live bands sing they any cover you want they're singing it they're playing it and you're they're dancing and you're jamming it. out yeah they're crushing it and mm -hmm. you're having a good time listening to live music whereas you're not it's not radio which it's so nice like it's you don't so nice. yeah. it's like I was I went to Nashville a couple years ago and I was like blown away I'm like wait you're telling me every little place has live music like when we hear about live music going out here especially in the valley you're like where I want to go like oh, it seems like it's not always accessible mm -hmm. more so downtown but still it's not the, quite the same and you're like why we have a big city we could make this happen but yeah there's a deep but, over there <laughs> it, yeah and, and you know the nightlife too I will say it's just it's not as popping here mm -hmm. as I wish it was especially with live bands like even when um a friend of mine came and we were trying to figure out we wanted to go watch live music where like there's not many options I mean no. the Roxy was the only place I could honestly think of um I, like I don't I know Kelowna they've had a couple um shows I see those get posted mm. but it, that's like four hours away yeah it's not so, yeah I see that mm. I've been watching what Kelowna is doing and I'm like they know what's up mm -hmm. and I, I think it's um is it Redbird Brewing I don't know they have those outdoor things happening something brewing you're correct I'm like, this is so cool. Yeah. I don't know why we're not doing more down here. I just, I don't know. I think, I don't know. There must be, I think it just takes one hub like Kelowna to do it. And then, oh, wow. That's like pretty cool. And everyone's coming. Mm -hmm. Everyone, all ages are coming. Let's do it down here. I'm hoping. <laughs> There's so many breweries everywhere here. Like you guys are so popular for it. They should totally take advantage of it and put mm -hmm. on shows. Like I even, I live beside um, Brewers Row, like in Port Moody. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that yeah. whole strip there, there's like six, seven breweries. Like in the summertime, you could totally put on a show there. People would go yeah. because it's such a hot spot. And it's, it's nice well, the days that it is nice. Like it's nice mm -hmm. to be over there when it's a yeah. nice sunny summer night. And it would, you'd make, they'd make, first of all, so much money. Oh and yeah. Second of all, the amount of talent that is all in Canada, like in Ontario and BC, even like Alberta, there's so much talented singers. And to be able to be given a stage like that, mm -hmm. they would jump at the opportunity. Oh, a billion times, yes. And especially there, it's like you just put one big stage outside, and while people are walking along, yeah. trying out the different areas, producing business for them, mm -hmm. they're also, oh hey, who is this person? oh wait they have their own music no way and then all of a sudden it's beneficial for everyone yep. so yeah little ideas this. like this <laughs> we should pitch this to them just you and we, we should will go to every brewery and say hey let's do this <laughs> we'll make a yeah. commission from it as well what oh. are you guys doing yeah what are you doing we talked about like so much off like <laughs> none of it it was like music related that we just got on to like the yeah. of breweries and all that I love it it's the best when conversations take such a detour because then you know it's natural and then it's not yeah formal because formal interviews are the absolute worst and they're just so awkward you know I know we're like yeah. oh okay <laughs> yeah it's like no you just gotta let it flow be casual have a conversation because mm -hmm. we're just humans like you know, well, we all like to talk. So, well, some people don't. 
but some people do and you and me clearly like to talk so I love to talk I'm like <laughs> I was the kid in class I was getting moved for chatting I wasn't a bad student I just I just felt like I needed to chat to everybody in the class <laughs> you know what that actually works though because you're a writer now too mm. so like being chatty clearly pays off yeah. in this industry because you can write about anything you want um and just I just wanted to like ask a question too because of uh, what if I on that song like the writers were obviously Dan and Garrett and you had Parker Gray Parker Gray love that girl to death her songs her lyrics cut you like they cut you and you're just like ouch and your songs do the same thing because we were just having this conversation um prior to me recording it about your song called better now that song were you a writer on that song or was that a song that was kind of just tossed to you not that one was but it was it was one it was tossed with like a bunch of songs um that was when I was super early on in my journey to recording music for the first time and Mm -hmm. I recorded other few songs I don't know if I'll I'll put them out I've just learned a lot about you know when you should and shouldn't put out music um I had such a fun time recording the other songs mm-hmm. and it was a good process and it was super exciting. It, it was like a song that was super edgy, but I was like, I don't know, you know, this is probably not strategically, you know, what I should put out. It's not, you know, I got some learning to do, but when I heard better right away, it was kind of like that. What if I moment where I was listening to it, I'm like, Holy moly. I was yes. like, Right away in my mm-hmm. gut, I was like, this is a beautiful song. And I would feel honored to share the story. And one of the writers is actually from BC, David Bory, Boris. And the other girl is from Nashville, Michaela Lynn. She is also a beautiful songwriter. I, she reminds me of Parker, like the words mm-hmm. that they write just immediately are like are you talking to me because that <laughs> that's directly my thought like mm-hmm. exactly on this situation and I remember hearing better for the first time I was like oh that's so true I just thought this song needs to get out there for anyone who needs to hear it mm-hmm. and- was that a song that you needed to hear too oh my gosh yes not even just relationships like say your partner just better in like relationships with anybody Mm -hmm. like I you know you sometimes it's just you forget that maybe you it's like that Taylor Swift song like it's me hi I'm the problem it's me (laughs) maybe maybe we all need to take a moment and breathe a little bit like maybe I messed up which is such a hard thing to do and I remember thinking like no Mm -hmm. I never do anything wrong you know but you're like holy I might not think that but to someone else that is like Mm -hmm. hurtful or it's just so hard when we are all unique individuals so when someone might be hurt by you you might be like you're hurt by that like there's just so much in that song that I was like yeah that's me that's me (laughs) the defense goes up right away when they say like oh like or when you say like you're actually hurt from that like I didn't even do anything wrong like I did Mm -hmm. nothing wrong in the moment you think you did nothing wrong, but then when months go by and you start to reflect on that or you get treated the same way that you treated that person, you're like, ouch, okay. Yeah. So it was me, um, hi, yes, I'm the problem, <laughs> so sorry. Um, but it, it, it's, it's like growing pains. Like you, you live yeah. and you learn it, and then you realize what not to do, um, exactly. whether it's a relationship with like, a significant other or just mm-hmm. a relationship with your friend or your parent who, whoever yeah. it may be you realize later like okay gonna not do this anymore because that actually hurts that person so mm-hmm. let's treat this person better than the last um oh, but yeah. the song is the song whether you wrote that song or not you still sung it like it was yours and it was it's a great it's great like you it was a good, great song. Like I have no other words to say like that is a song that will cut you. Um, and your voice on that will cut you. So people please go listen to that song called better. Um, also listen to her new song, of course, too, but better is just, okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, what else do you have in store for this year? I have another song coming out in May. 
Oh, that's exciting. Okay, uh, so what's the, are we, is it like a, a summer tune? Is it um, like a sad, I feel like it's not a sad it, song. It's like, um, like in between. Okay. I don't want to say it's sad. It's more, it's mid-tempo. So, I, you know, it's not as high energy as Bandit. I'm sorry, that's the name of the song. It's not, oh. as, high <laughs> as, it's not as high energy as What If I, but it's also not, a, you know, as slow as better. It's kind of like in between. Mm. And to me, my inspo, when we were talking about producing it, I'm like, I want it to feel like, um, like a Noah Cyrus type thing. Like I just oh, okay. feel like, there needs to be lots of harmonies. I, I love doing harmonies. And I was like, I want lots of them. And like, just like taking people on a journey um, through the song and with my voice, like I, I love singing and I just wanted to try whatever, you know, and That's you know, what... there's just, there's so much you learn for me. I'm learning so much as I go along and I'm just kind of like trying anything you know when we get in there and produce a song I'm like well here's this idea you know <laughs> it out there. yeah well yeah. your producers too they're awesome at what they do um talented duo uh oh, so goodness. I'm sure they'll never steer you wrong either if they know no. a song is a hit they will make sure that you know the song is a hit mm -hmm. and everybody else knows that the song is a hit so I'm excited to hear your new one that's coming out in May that's a great way to start the summer I think so and you know I'm been to me this is like like my producers are like they'll throw songs be like hey we wrote this with this person we do you want to hear it and I always take their like suggestions like I feel honored because they have such good taste and they they know it's like they know mm -hmm. when they have something good in their hands and they don't want to waste it or like you know it might have not been great for the songwriter but this song needs to be out there and someone needs to tell this story. And they're just so good at that. And I, I love the story and the message from Bandit. And I'm working right now myself for something for summer. So, you know, getting into the studio and trying to work out these ideas. It's in my mind, it's a, an upbeat one for late summer. Okay. <laughs> so I like, I love, I love the upbeat songs and I also love the sad ones, but summer is like, I want to hear I mean, I'd love to get some fiddle in a song. Oh, okay. I like, it. like I love the fiddle. <laughs> Do you know how to play it? No. <laughs> okay. Next, you see, you can learn how to play it now, and then you so, can add it. Like, I can add it myself. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, you know, I actually had to teach myself guitar late in life because, yet again, I was like, yeah, I'm a singer. That's it. <laughs> but no, I during COVID, I taught myself the guitar and. It's been fun. I love the guitar. I, you know, I wish I could shred. It's huh, so like cool. Like yeah. When I, when I watch people do that, I'm like sick. I, I, I just love when anyone's got like this talent and they're just super into it. I think it's so cool. I just, I'll be the biggest hype person for them. I love it. <laughs> Even it's... like my bandmates, I'm like, gosh, you're so sick. I'm out there filming them, you know. <laughs> supportive I love it oh I love that I think it's so cool so you you just learned to play the guitar then how about the piano uh just chords I kind of use the basic chords just going so on fun. tabs and just when I'm trying to write something or get melody I don't know what I'm doing but I'm just like being you know fucking <laughs> it's along still, it's and still I, something you know something and yeah I kick myself for not paying attention to piano lessons growing up as most kids get put into piano lessons never but... paid attention to that I was in it no nope. <laughs> no I wasn't piano. I wanted to sing instead and I remember when I tried singing and playing at the recital and it I sucked because it's really hard when you're so focused on the singing to then try to start playing at the same time and it, to me I thought I was just gonna sing as if I was singing on my own and I really didn't like the the sucking feeling and the failing and I gave up and that's the worst thing you could do yeah oh you have to like sit with the failure and I fail every single day <laughs> there's I there's so many parts on failure oh, but yeah. it's a part, a part of life like you're gonna fail before you succeed at anything so yeah. it's just something that you just gotta get used to yeah and for me I had a hard time dealing with it because I I always wanted to be so good at everything I did 
And when I tried songwriting the first time, I wrote a whole song and I thought, this is great. And then I tried to write another one and it's just like the ideas weren't coming and I got frustrated and I kind of like gave up on it for a couple of months and then got back into it. Gave, you know, it's like this, but then I realized I have to just do it every day. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to suck, it's going to suck. And if it's going to be great, that's cool. But to yeah. me right now, it's like more of a, just write it out, get it out. Stop being so worried about the outcome. Yeah. And some people learn that, you know, well before me but to me I, I get proud of myself and I don't give up like that's kind of where I'm at in my journey right now it's like I just get excited when I can finish something top to finish top to bottom and then you know usually Does if I think it's worth it I'll send it to my mom and if she says that's nice I know it's not really something that I should be bringing to the producers just oh, yet my, my mom's like the filter because you know I want to yeah. bring good ideas or good concepts so I always like to be like, mom, how's this? You know, she has moms, so are the best. Notes. <laughs> moms are so honest. They will bluntly tell you if like something is bad or if something is good. If you look pretty or if you look ugly, they will tell you. <laughs> I love the honesty. I'm like, yeah, yeah thank you. I yeah. thought that was great because I worked on it all day. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll go fix that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny. How many times a day do you call your mom? Just out of curiosity, since we're on How this much? topic. How yeah. many times do I call my mom? Yeah. All the time. And I see her so many times a week. Uh, my parents live on the farm. So I come out here and we walk along the dike and we vent and chat. And my mom's my best friend. So I love that. I fun. honestly love it. So you're a farm girl. I'm a farm girl. Hardcore. I had to get up and feed the calves as a child. <laughs> you're you're a pure Miley Stewart. That's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like I know what the farm life is I'm probably the least farm like out of my siblings like two of them are actually farmers and yeah I'm I kind of just took a different route I took a different route but I appreciate the farm life I think it's where I got most of my drive and work ethic from was just watching everyone around me just work all the time like farmers yeah. don't really get days off I mean they get their it's their nap time but there's Growing a hustle. It's a hustle. Farming. Yeah. You're Big a hustle. Yeah. You're doing things all the time. <laughs> you're doing the dirty work. That's what you're yeah. doing. You're doing the work that none of us <laughs> want to do. Yeah. We will eat the food, but we will not be anywhere near the process of how the food is, is made or raised yeah. or any of that. Oh my gosh. Um, but since you just started off in the industry, like not too long ago, What's like the biggest piece um, or the biggest lesson that you've learned so far or the biggest piece of advice that you've gotten? I know I kind of put I you mean, on a, a I kind of just like, tossed that one at you. I was talking to, like everyone says networking. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, something that I'm not good at, but the problem with me is like, I, I love talking to people, but I won't be the first one to walk up to someone. <laughs> which I gotta get better um but just like trying like trying mm -hmm. things, throwing stuff at the wall and if they stick they stick if they don't what can you do for the next time because there's always going to be a next time you're always yeah. going to put on another song or your your goal is to put it on another song so like taking what worked and what didn't and using it for the next one and just always kind of be moving and mm -hmm. uh yeah, trying to do things on your own too, but also knowing when you can invite someone in to help you with certain things that, yeah, you might not have the expertise on. So I've learned on like when to bring on someone and I've learned, oh, maybe that wasn't really a good investment or maybe that wasn't what was going to help me. And maybe that wasn't a good per, you know, maybe that wasn't mm -hmm. a good, maybe I shouldn't have done that for that one or all these things. And then you just move on and yeah you're gonna yeah. I failed a lot in a year like I, I I used to like I used to hate failure but now I kind of like wow that was a lot of learning um it cost think me. <laughs> nobody likes failure everybody no. hates failure because our egos are way too big 
Um, when we fail, oh, yeah. it's like the end of the world for us. And when you make a mistake, it's like the day is ruined just from mm -hmm. that little mistake, but it happens. And it's, yeah. it's so hard to, to understand or to like deal with, yeah. but you just have to like keep pushing through it and just keep moving forward. Re like yeah. realistically, what else can you do? You can't go back in time, right? Yeah, no, and you can't go back. There's, you know, no <laughs> way that's possible. No, if and only then, there was a way, but there is not. So it sucks. And just do think, I mean, I feel like this is so silly, but like do it because you love it. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Love what you do. Love Be what you do. It will never feel like work if you love what you do. I actually just posted um a video today and I used that caption. I was mm -hmm. like, if you love what you do, does not feel like work. If yeah. you hate what you do, then you're just screwed. So yeah, get out of a, that field. The crappy feeling to have to <laughs> yeah. feel that way. And some people, you know, some people have different circumstances where they gotta, they have to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just hope for one day that there's a way that they can love what they do or find it or have an opportunity or get like a hand in something. Like you just hope because we're only here for a short little time. Yeah, you gotta sure. love what you do or, you know, work towards something yeah work towards what you want to do in life or like mm -hmm. yeah exactly love what you do because as we were even talking about beforehand you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring um you're here today you could be gone tomorrow and it's th th just the truth it, like, yeah the, so many people are like gosh Annika that's so dark when you say that but it's like geez. sometimes life will show you experiences where it's like oh it can be taken away yep no yep. matter how you plan your life or you're you you've done everything and you've you've done everything by the book or like mm -hmm. it shouldn't lead me into a traumatic or some kind of situation and then it happens and you're like oh gosh what was all those little things I worried about before yep oh shoot maybe I should go follow my dreams because yeah you, 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 you don't never know. know yeah because you, know. you yep so true. I feel like that's like the perfect way to actually end this interview. Um, because we just got a little deep here, but it's it's the truth. Um, here today can be gone tomorrow. So make sure you actually enjoy your life, live your life, and do what you want to do. And if people don't like what you're doing, then screw them. It's not yeah. their life, it's your life. If it makes you happy, makes you happy. Um, but yeah, Annika, thank you actually so much for joining me today on Country with Slim. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I love chatting with you. Our conversation, I, I love it. I love it. Um, I can't wait to catch up with you again. And I'm sure I'll actually see you around too since we're both in BC. And um, yeah, we'll definitely catch up soon.